This video is a visual tutorial that's going to give you great detail on how I go step by step on building one of these bows and the tools that I use, materials that I use. Now even going into greater detail is the book that accompanies this video which will give you dimensions, it'll tell you exactly how I build my forms and a uh, parts list, materials list, everything you need to build several of my fire breathing speed demon bows. Now you'll see that I use clamps, which is a little different than some, some boyers, but you'll, you'll see why um, as you read the book and as you watch this video. Uh, here's one of the forms that I make. This is for my high reflex with the curl tips, uh, my fastest bow design that is also included in the book. All the specs on materials, thicknesses, and everything you need for that bow is going to be included. Um, this is a pressure strip that you'll see me apply to that bow, and you're going to need some epoxy, of course. My choice is EA40, also known as Smooth On. You're going to need a hot box, which I go into great detail on how to build an inexpensive, really simple one in the book. Uh, I use a foil-faced bubble wrap to line the interior of the, in of the box if you're doing wood. I also have a um, details on how to build one out of just foil-faced foam. Now here's some of the tools that you're going to need, just simple, really simple and expensive hand tools. It doesn't take a lot to build a really awesome high performance bow like this. Um, you know, you might want to get a scale, digital scale, just to weigh the bow afterwards if you don't have one already. They're very inexpensive, uh, called the luggage scales, and they're usually about $10. You're going to need these, these discs, all right? This one is 40 grit, and it will work through a bow in minutes. I mean, some bows I can get done shaped in about 20-30 minutes. Some take closer to an hour depending on how long they are. To begin laying out the bow, you always want to start with a clean, dry, dust-free surface. You lay out your materials, and I like to try and stack them in order of how they're going to be placed into the bow sandwich, which that's basically what you're making when you're making a laminate bow is you're basically making a bow sandwich. You're going to have to tape the back and the belly lambs, the glass lambs, and because you're going to have to draw on them. And that's basically how you lay out your bow. And you know, you're going to find center, you're going to cut it to length, and you're going to make your marks all off of the center point. You're also going to draw a line down the middle, so you're going to have a center line running vertically and one running horizontally so that you can make all your your uh, marks for your profile dimensions real easy. And this of course is the key critical part you know to laying out a, a really high performance bow is which which I cover in the book I give you exactly all the dimensions and thicknesses and and uh, distances and, and how to lay the bow out, um, but uh, you're getting most of it in the video here. As I said, the both the book and the video go hand in hand, so you really will be able to build exactly the bow that I'm showing you here today, plus several others. Now here I'm showing a template that I use that because I make, you know, once you make a lot of bows, you come to find that you don't want to measure too much anymore. So you make a template and you can just lay it out and kind of trace it, um, which you guys can definitely do as well in your own shop. Um, but the, uh, you know, I go in detail in the book with the, like every two inches, I give you increments of exactly what the width is. So you have the profile pyramid lines, you'll have it exact where you need it. And um, once you draw it out, you'll see the bow on the tape and you'll see exactly what material you need to remove. And that's all there is to it. I mean, if you can get the glue up correct, which is what I'm showing you here, then you're gonna have yourself a phenomenal lightweight 
physically in the hand lightweight bow that can be as powerful as you want you know anywhere from you can make them as low as as low as you want and as, as high as you want i give you varying thicknesses to work with so you can get bows up in the 60 65 pound range and if you tweak it a little you can of course get them higher than that um, but uh, as most of you know my favorite is somewhere in the 40 pound range and uh, just really fast the, the you know the more mass you add then you're just asking too much of the material and you don't have a lot of speed returns. So one trick that I found is that, you know, when cutting your laminations um, is to wrap some tape around the area where you're gonna make the cuts. And I like to use these really powerful shears because they, they work quite well. I mean, they don't splinter if you do the tape right and it just cuts through as fast as possible. You don't have to worry about boogering up your bandsaw blade or you know taking a hacksaw to it and and then getting all the dust flying everywhere so these shears are a phenomenal inexpensive tool i suggest you get them so once i go with the first one then i can line it up on the second lamination and i can of course mark it where i need to and get the tape around it cut it to length as well and then you can follow up with the the bamboo pieces all your laminations of course have to be the same length I'm going to talk about this hot box a little bit here. Now, this is something that I had materials laying around when I started making these bows, which was many years after I started making bows uh, in general. You know, the laminated bows, um, which I made laminated bows before, but they were just, um, they weren't with fiberglass. So the fiberglass laminated bows came many years after my bow making. And, um, you know, so I had some materials laying around and I had enough plywood laying around to make enough scrap wood and plywood laying around to make my first, you know, hot box and two forms. And it's, I mean, it served me great because my bows are small. It works perfect. So here's how the shears, you can see that they just really just cut through everything and it doesn't splinter, it doesn't leave a mess, doesn't blow dust everywhere. And it's really important at this stage not to have dust flying around in your shop. So essentially the, um, the hot box and the forms cost me nothing to get started. And I've been using these same two for years. So here's shaping the wedges. These are the bamboo wedges. This is from the leftover pieces that you have cut off and you want to create the wedges that are going to go ahead and they're going to build the stiff static tip, which is called the SIA. And you need to put an angle to them so that they lay in there and they'll be able to curl up and wedge in between your two bamboo laminations, the back and the belly lamination. And you'll see that further on into the video. Right now I'm prepping the surfaces. I wanna sand it and I'll be blowing everything off here. But, so this is minimal dust. You wanna sand the bamboo just lightly, just get everything, you know, sometimes it picks up lint or dust or um, oils from your fingers from handling it. So I like to sand it off. I like to sand it off and then blow everything clean. And then it's good practice to put all of your wood and bamboo laminations into the hot box for maybe 20, 30 minutes, just to kind of, in case they've been sitting around for a little bit and then you could have picked up some moisture from the air. This will dry them out real quick because you don't want any moisture in your laminations when you go to glue everything up with the epoxy. After about 20 minutes, I pull them out and I start doing a dry run. This is basically you're stacking the bow sandwich in the order that it's gonna be, you know, your back fiberglass lamb, then your back bamboo lamb, the handle, 
belly lamb, put your seal wedges in there, and then you're gonna put your, uh, your belly, excuse me, belly fiberglass lamb on top, and you're gonna kind of get an idea of what your bow sandwich is gonna look like on your form. A dry run is a really good practice for anything you ever do, just to kind of get your mind ready for it and visually see it happening. And um, Because the glue up point, you know, is, is, it's a little hectic at times. You have a lot of working time with this epoxy, but here I am just making sure that it's fitting nice around the riser, that my glue lines will be nice and clean. Now I have to just lay it out, lay it out in order of how it's gonna go on your form. And this is again, just prep work for gluing up. Get your epoxy opened up and you're gonna dish out, you know, enough equal parts of each, the A and the B. Uh, I like to do for my small bows, I like to have a lot, you know, I, in the beginning I would use very minimal glue as little as possible, but I found some areas when it got clamped down, some stuff got starved of glue and I didn't like that. So it gets messy when you use a lot more than you need, but you know that there's enough glue. So it's better safe than sorry. And, um, I basically do five scoops of each with these large popsicle sticks. So it's equal part A and B, five scoops of each, and then you need to mix the two together for a solid three minutes. This is an important part. Make sure you mix it good everywhere. Make sure your stick and your your, your, your container, it's, it's important to use kind of plastic or metal container, something clean. Mix it up for the three minutes that it requires. And take your time with this. Make sure there is not a single spot on any lamination that does not look shiny, all right? You don't want any dry spots anywhere. Take your time doing this. You got a couple hours. You got plenty of time to do this work. This is, you know, the most critical part. So once you get the first lamination done, you know, you don't want to start stacking them on your, on your form just yet. You're going to stack them on your work area and then you're going to bring the whole sandwich to the form. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on the second lamb, get it all the way done end to end, and then you can flip and begin your sandwich. So you're going to put that piece glue to glue, make sure it's lined up nice. You, know, you should have center lines everywhere so you know, and then you're going to start applying the epoxy to the other side of that lamination. And then the next step, of course, is gonna be your wedges and your, your riser, and then the other laminations to follow. Just take your time, make sure everything's done right. No dry spots. Make sure you center that up good. You don't want to put it down and then have to smear it left to right because you're going to remove glue every time you do that. Now I apply a lot of extra glue at key union spots where like the other laminations have to bend around the handle and then adhere to the, to the back laminations and so forth and around the wedges and stuff. So you'll see me apply an extra glob of epoxy there and that's because it's needed. I want to make sure that there's excess, you know, Again, more is better, better safe than sorry. And this epoxy is not expensive. I mean, I think it's roughly around $20 for these small cans and I, I can get two bows out of that.
Now there's nothing wrong with, you know, any glue that's already starting to squeeze out or glob out the sides, you know, there's nothing wrong with scraping that off and reusing it. Put it somewhere where it's needed. And as you can see on that lamination right there where I put those wedges down on that first, the beginning of the sandwich, there's a glob. And that's because that's another spot right there with where the back laminations and the belly laminations have to go around something. They have to go around the wedge. They have to go around this handle. Take your time. You can see I'm not, you know, it's not frantic or anything. Just make sure you're doing like careful surgery. No dry spots. All right, and replace the last lamination onto the sandwich. Making sure your center lines all line up right there on the riser. And then the next step is to just basically pick up the sandwich and put it up onto your form, which the form has to have cling wrap, plastic wrap covering it. Otherwise, you're going to glue your bow to your form. So you're gonna do cling wrap over the form, put your bow sandwich in the form, and then cling wrap over top of that. I'm just checking the ends to make sure the wedges didn't slide out, make sure everything's lining up with the very end of all the laminations. Here goes the cling wrap over top of the entire bow sandwich. Now I like to use some type of sturdy tape. Um, my choice is just electrical tape, but you can use any type of tape you want. Um, this is easy because I can, I can stretch it, I can bind it. I can stretch it, I can bind it tight, and um, I can just tear it when I need it. So I, I do it in key spots, like around the handle area, the fades, and around the seas, just so everything stays put when I begin clamping. And it doesn't wiggle left or right or, or squeeze out. So I like these ratchet wrenches, they really uh, come in handy. Of course can use an impact gun here, but I like to, when I'm torquing down everything, I like to feel it. And by feel, I mean that's what you're going to go by. You're just going to go by what feels good. In the beginning, right here, I'm just getting it to where it started. There is no tightening right now, it's just kind of putting the clamp in place and making sure nothing shifted. And then I kind of put my pressure strips on with a little bit of leather right there at the fade and then I start to place my clamps to either side of the riser and then I pick one limb and work down that limb first all the way down to the seas and then I go to the other limb and repeat and so this is mostly hand tightened until I'm satisfied with the placement of the clamps and then I go back and tighten everything and torque everything down with the ratchet wrenches Here I'm just getting them started a little more than finger type so I can make sure that that riser is not going to shift left or right. It's not going to go side to side because I have those little cheek pieces that I swiveled up, the little pieces of wood. 
that really hold the riser and all the laminations in place on the form. But as far as it shifting down one limb or the other limb, you know, tightening these on either side of the, of the riser are important. And once you know you have the handle locked in place, then you can start moving down the limb. And I like to do it every couple inches and you'll see here exactly how many clamps I use. And um, it's, it's, I find it's the most efficient way to get even pressure and something that's reliable to hold for 24 hours or more, as many hours as you need it to. Um, the hose system, I kind of always felt a little sketchy about. You never know when a hose could have a pinhole or a hose could fail, or if you're not getting exact clamping pressure, you know, 14 inches down the limb versus, you know, you are getting enough at the riser, but there may be a, a dead spot and I just never felt good about it. So I like clamps. They may take a few more minutes to do, but you really know it's clamped and uh, you know it's good to go. Got one side done and now I'm finishing up the other side. And then I just went over and clamped everything down with the ratchet wrench. And you know, it's just till it feels good. You don't crank it till it's dead stopped. Um, there's no torque settings, I'm sorry about that, but you just gotta know what feels good. If you're a mechanic, then it should be easy for you. If you're not, just go until it feels right, all right? You don't wanna have, you don't wanna squeeze out all your glue, but that's pretty impossible with the amount I use. Um, but you just want to go to it feels right. You shouldn't be able to wiggle the clamps and it shouldn't hurt you to tighten it and it should you should not hear it cracking. And a good thing to do is to count your turns on each clamp. So if you clamp one side of the clamp, 25 turns, 25 quarter turns, do the same thing to the other bolt. Now here I am using a power, you know, um, impact gun to pull it off because, you know, I just like to get it off quick. It's like Christmas morning, man. You just unwrap the gift as fast as you can. Just rip it out of there. I will say though, be careful at the very last moment of pulling your bow out because you don't want to crack anything. If there is, you know, some glue stuck to the form, somehow it leaked through or something and you start to yank on your bow, that's not going to be good. So make sure that your bow is free to move out. Once you've got it pulled free, start taking off any excess um, plastic wrap and tape. That's just going to get in your way for the next step, which is um, gluing on the tips. Now you can, if you feel comfortable, you can start to snap off some of the, the globs of glue that have dried with a pair of pliers, um, or you can just leave it there. It's really not going to affect anything. The, the method I have of removing it really comes off quick, but if you feel confident in just plucking some of it off with the pliers, go for it. Just um, word of caution, it can be sharp when you start ripping and breaking it off like that. All right, so now you're gonna plug in your hot box and you're gonna start to get it up to temp while you go ahead and work on putting the tips on because then once the tips are on and locked in place, we're gonna put the whole bow in the hot box and it's gonna cure the tips and it's gonna further cure the epoxy and you're gonna leave it in there for about six to eight hours. So I'll measure from center out to the tip and center out to the tip on both sides and I'll see how well I did as far as lineup goes. And then if everything's great, I'll pick a magic number from in from the end. Usually it's a half inch or so from the end, um, depending on, you know, how, if there's any, if was there any shifting in the laminations, but if not, you should be good to go just by, you know, measuring out exact distances 
as to where to place your tip pieces. And I use phenolic um, overlays, usually cut them about an inch and a quarter long, sometimes inch and a half, depending on the length of the bow, but usually around an inch to an inch and a quarter long, I like really small tips. And it's, it's you just make your marks and then you just take a, a razor and just kind of scratch the surface so you have a, a, a cutting line. And then I'll use a, um, it's a round, a round saw blade on a hacksaw and it just cuts right through that. Use the first one you cut to measure out the second one, cut it. And then we are going to take both of these and we're gonna completely remove the shiny surface off of um, one side of both of these pieces. I think I was using 60 grit in here, but you know, you can use anything that will take it off, but you want it to be flat still. So don't use a file and don't do it on a rounded surface. Just use it on a flat surface. So you can just kind of just, you just want to scrape off the shiny. And then we're going to go ahead and clean it with some acetone. We're going to wipe off all the little so, uh, the dust that you just created. So we just have a nice, clean, dry surface to go ahead and um, epoxy these tips on. Now we kind of got to do the same thing to the um, tips of the bow. So we're going to match up exactly where you want these to lay out. We're going to trace a line and then we're going to, with a razor knife, we're going to go ahead and pluck up the, the um, tape from that section and expose the fiberglass lamination on the back of the bow so that we can sand its surface as well. We need to rough it up. So it can't be shiny, it has to be rough, just like we made the phenolic tips, and then acetone it, and then um, we'll be ready to glue the tips on. For this, you just need very minimal. It's like, you know, one scoop of each with a plastic spoon and mix it up. I mean, you just need a, a few drops of this epoxy, but you still want to treat it the same. So you're going to mix it for three minutes and you're going to apply it to both surfaces and then um, put your phenolic tips onto the bow tip and lock it in with some tape. Once you've got it in place, apply a little pressure so you get a little bit of squeeze out and then you're gonna to wanna to clean off that excess, especially in front of the um, tip overlay, you know, I'm like moving down towards the limb because that area will become a problem for you later when you go to remove the tape and you go to clean up that transition from the limb to the overlay. So pay attention to that part the most. Make sure you clean that area up like you see me doing here. When you put the tape on, it's important to make sure, obviously, you know, it didn't shift on you. Uh, if it squeezed out anymore, because it's going to apply some clamping pressure to the tape, you know, when you pull it tight, clean that off. 
and do that to the other side and then you're ready to put the bow in the box. I like to set my bow on a block of wood that's in the center, so it's just kind of resting on that in the handle, so it's not sitting directly on the bottom. The bow's not touching anything, is essentially what you want. You want it to be right around 150 degrees. It's okay if it's a little hotter than that, somewhere between 150 and 165, I find is great. And about six to eight hours later, you shut it off, and here I am the next day. So you shut off the box after about seven hours of heating time, and then you let it sit there usually overnight or you know close to 12 hours just let it cool on its own and then so mine is usually the next day so mine the next day I'll pull it out and I'll put on my nasty you know outfit ready to grind the fiberglass because you definitely don't want this stuff getting on any part of your skin mask up goggle up and get your angle grinder out with your sanding disc and have at it. So you're going to follow the lines that you drew on the back of the bow. That's all you have to do is now all you have to do is shape the bow limbs, basically shape the bow limbs to those lines that you drew and then shape the riser, how you want it to fit your hand, clean up your tips, put your string grooves in and the bow is done. So we're going to go through this process here you're going to watch me it's real simple you just want to have good control of the angle grinder you don't want to get wild because obviously you know you can you can dig in and take off a lot of material real quick that you can't put back does not take long at all so again take your time on this because you know you can get away the tool can get away from you and do some damage so I mean it, it this should take this takes me about 30 to 40 minutes it might take you an hour hour and a half because it's your first time doing it just take your time and just barely run the angle grinder the sanding disc along the side of the bow make sure you're not running at an angle otherwise you're only gonna be removing material from the, either the top or the bottom and you're not gonna be getting it flush just take it to the lines. When you start shaping the handle, it really starts to get exciting. You start to get that little, those butterflies in your stomach. Like, oh man, this is looking like a bow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be shooting this thing soon. And that's, that's the truth. I mean, if you did your lines right, and you shape it to the lines, uh, you're, you're gonna have a bow. Uh, so right here, you see how fast that stuff comes off. When I really, and I'm applying some more pressure than I would on the limbs here, and I'm starting to shape the preliminary shape of the uh, handle. And you can. You can shape the entire handle with this tool once you become confident and comfortable with it. Uh, of course, you're going to take some some files and some fine sandpaper and stuff to clean it up when it's done. But because this is 40 grit, but this can really give you that nice hourglass shape or whatever you want. You know, if you want a double relief, so you can shoot off both left and right. You can put a shelf in. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, here I am now on the um, disc sander. I'm basically cleaning up the tips. Um, with a little more finesse, a little more control, just to get them in, because I like to make the tips real streamlined and skinny and, and tight to the line, or even take out the line 
in a lot of cases at the tip. If you don't have a sander like this, you know, then, you know, files, of course, and a block sander can do all the work. And then I use that same round, um, that round blade on the, on the hacksaw to go ahead and cut in the string grooves into the phenolic. And you're going to go, you're going to go basically a little deeper than the blade thickness in the, in the top and then on each side and the sides have to be at a slight angle down towards the handle for obvious reasons. And then I'll take some sandpaper and clean up those grooves, make sure there's no sharp edges in there. And cause we're going to go ahead and string it up here momentarily and see how we did. The last thing I like to do before I string it up is I don't like any hard edges, no sharp edges on any bows and that, you know, the, the, um, the angle grinder leaves some sharp edges when you're using that sanding disc. So I'll just go over it with some sandpaper and I'll round off all the edges. We're going to string it up and basically just check its profile and, uh, see if everything looks equal. Here I am just making sure that that string didn't want to sit inside a string groove. So might have to make an adjustment there, but it looks like we got a little bit of a tiny bit low brace height. So I might adjust that, but the, the bow looks good so far. I'm happy. I mean, look at that reflex. It's just beautiful. So here I made an adjustment to the string and increased the brace height a little bit and she looks great. Literally off the shaping ready to shoot. I'm going to check its draw weight now and it should be somewhere around 35 pounds. Came out pretty perfect. I couldn't ask for, you know, a better on the spot mark. I mean, it's 36 pounds. And when you do the final sanding, you take tape off and you do a little bit clean up of the edges and you take out your, your tool marks or anything like that, you know, when you really fine tune the sanding. I mean, it's, it's a little drop, probably a pound. So it might, it might be right around that 35 pound mark, which is what I was shooting for. Um, you know, and this bow will shoot over 200 feet per second. You can scale up the design to be a 40 pound, a 38 pound, a 45 pound, you know, and so forth. Uh, you can even make it lighter than this, of course. Time to pull the tape off the final wrapping on Christmas morning and see how pretty she looks. Let's get a little shiny finish on this bad boy and then take it out for a speed test. So all my speed testing is done with a nine grains per pound arrow. And what that means is basically if you have a 40 pound bow, then you are going to need a 360 grain arrow. And that is nine times 40. It's as simple as that. So we have a 35 pound bow, so somewhere around the 315 mark is going to be nine grains per pound. It's really quite simple. Um, and I've taken a lot of the guesswork out, you know, I've, I've been doing this for years. I've made thousands of bows and I have several designs that require no tillering. And the reason I say no tillering is because if you just draw out the bow and you shape it, it's side profile, as you saw me do here today, then you should be able to string it up and start shooting it without sanding the back and the belly. And that's a beautiful thing because I know lots of bowyers that spend, you know, hours or days sanding and tillering a bow on a tillering tree and sanding the back and the belly thousands of times, thousands of strokes. And you don't need to do that with this, as you saw. So, you know, the book 
It goes into great detail on all the dimensions to build several of my bows. I mean, complete specs. So all you have to do is buy the materials, draw them out, and glue it up as I showed you here, and shape it, and you have the same bows that I make. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to contact me. I'll leave the link in the description box below for the book. And you can also find it on meadlongbows.com. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.